whole lot going on right here. A whole lot. I don't see nobody. So we're going to move up a little bit because I want to see faces. I want to feel energy because that's how I speak. I speak off of the energy that I feel. Because you see my thing says from trauma to toxicity. You know what trauma is, right? You know what toxicity is, right? So toxicity is poison. And trauma is our natural response to it. So I don't want to feel like this room has trauma. I want to feel the energy that there is nothing toxic that anybody is feeling in here. So let's move up. Let's move in. And now look to your left and your right and see people. Come on over. Say, come on over. Come on over. Come on over. Okay. So let me explain something to you why I think it is so valuable and so important that we move from having trauma and toxicity in our life to just being able to be free and unapologetic. So you can shake it out, you can feel it, but it's everyday work. And I'm gonna tell you from experience why this means so much to me. So on the front side, I will tell you three marriages, three divorces, no babies though. Um, <laughs> And sometime, for, for years, like over 20 years of my life, I felt like I was on a repeated series of pumped. That's how toxic I was. That's the level of poison that I was giving out. Okay, Siri. <laughs> she in here too, she, you know. And so when I decided to take a break from myself, I had to heal. I got to learn who Pam was. Not Dr. Pam, because that's just a title. I'm not a title. I'm a person, I'm a human being. I'm not what I thought I was. See, for a long time, if somebody asked me, well, who is, who is Dr. Pam? I can give all of the accolades because I didn't want to deal with me. I didn't want to deal with the hurt and the pain that I have from being a young child, not fitting in because we're socialized to be toxic. As a very young child, I was told I wasn't black enough. Oh, why do you look different? Your hair is, your hair is curly. You don't speak like you're black. You don't act like you're black. You don't like black songs. I, I lost my black card a whole bunch of times growing up. But what does a child know about that? How do you get a child to explain why they look different, why they can't fit in? That's why I had three marriages. That's why I had three divorces. That's why I was in domestic violence relationships, even though I taught domestic violence prevention. Yeah, the irony in that. Um, but I had to deal with me, my honesty, my transparency, and I did, by the grace of God, because what turned my life around was not going to jail. Literally. I was in Germany in the worst relationship ever with the narcissist who built this life that I thought was real. He was everything I wanted. Military officer, great person on the surface, at least that's what he showed me. Seven months into my marriage, moved to Germany, resigned the first time from the federal government to go with him, found out that I was wife number three, even though he said he had no kids and never been married. And he had a, I don't know, seven-year-old child at that point. Never heard of her, never saw her. But he dressed it up so nice. You know why I couldn't see? Because I brought him to me. All that negative energy that I was giving. Oh, you all can sit down. I was just saying, you all are engaged, like, oh, I love it though, I love it. But everything that I was giving out, I was getting back. Everything I was getting back. That's energy. What you want, you're going to get, whether it's good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. So how did I heal after um, I almost killed him after we fought for the last time? He pulled my hair out for the last time, had my head slammed on uh, cement. And because you know, Germany floors are kind of hard. They're very conservative. We didn't have carpet or anything like that. But I'm a fighter. I'm from DC, I'm from the hood. I fought back. I gave just as much as I got. Hello. But that's not healthy. No. See, I thought that's what, I was like, well, you know what? Hmm. I gave just as much, but I also made excuses. I dressed my life up. I had every accolade. I was educated moved up in the federal government and had everything on the surface, dressed everything up. People thought, oh, she has the best relationships. I was so messed up on the inside. And after we fought, 
and I just packed everything up and left because I was going to take his life. I was like, oh, I am done. This cannot be my life. And I stood over him with a knife. Then it clicked. You're in Germany. You work real hard to get to where you at. Do you want to be locked up in a Germany prison? I didn't want, I don't look good um, in stripes, orange, or whatever kind of uniforms they have. It's a nice color, just not on me. Not behind bars. I love my freedom. And I packed up while he slept, and I left. But the unique thing about me leaving was not normal. A, a woman called his phone, and I answered. And she told me, I'm so glad you answered because I'm worried about you. You need to leave now. And I was like, who are you? She said, he, something about him did not make me comfortable. She came and picked me up. I just trusted it. I just trusted my energy at that time. She came and picked me up, took me to her house. I stayed with her, and she took me to the airport the next morning. And I came back. And from that point on, I decided I need to take a break because I have no idea who the hell I am. I only know that I like what other people like. I only know that I would go where other people wanted to go or, you know, just, hey, unless it was professional because then, I mean, I was all about that. You know, my, my life was my job. It was my education. It was everything except for me. So I, li I lived in a place of toxicity that my always response was trauma. My relationships led to trauma. How I dealt with people was from a trauma response. And so I decided one day to go like a year or so. I wanted really 12 months. I just wanted freedom. Didn't want a relationship. I just wanted to ground myself and get to know me. Woo, let me tell you. I learned everything that I love. I learned how to date myself. I learned how to like myself. I learned that things that I did not even like. Most of all, I learned the power of I. I am special. I am worthy. I can affirm so many things that change and enrich my life. I can be anything that I want to be. I bring the energy that I want in my life. The second thing I learned is the power of no. And sometimes not just no, but hell no. <laughs> All right. I, I listen to that spirit that's led inside me, and that's how I operate. So if it doesn't feel good, and we all guilty, don't not, one person in here can tell me that something told you not to do something, but your friends kept pushing. Come on, do it. Come on, do, I do everything for you. Anytime you want to do something, I always do it. My answer is still no now. Because as soon as I do something that goes against what my spirit tells me, oh, Lord, everything happens. I'm back on pumped. <laughs> and, and who wants to live on that wondering and being on the edge of wondering what bad could happen? So if you're intentional about your energy, you're intentional about the power of I and the power of no. The other thing is when I, after I healed and I was speaking to people and they would always say, do you have a book? I was like, no. Who wants to write about that kind of trauma and those experiences because I was ashamed for a very long time? Who wants to say they've been married three times, divorced three times? No kids. I always stick to that. Uh, who wants to say that? Who wants to say that they were driven to protect other people instead of protect their own interests? Certainly not anyone who is living in a place of trauma and a place of toxic energy. We don't want that. But the more honest and transparent that I became with my story, I decided, because other people led me to, write my book. And then I went back through my trauma, because I had to face it. I cried writing my book. I peeled like an onion writing my book. But by the time I was done, another me had morphed. A better me had morphed. The unapologetic, authentic me Morphed. And then I learned to live in that space. And as a part of that, I came up with something called the pedestal philosophy. And it's a unique philosophy, and I wrote about it in, in the very first book, I Am Not a Stereotype. I am H-E-R. And H-E-R is just derivative of things that I just chose that 
started with H's, E's, and R's. But what's unique about that book is that you can't box me in. And you can't box me in because of the pedestal philosophy. See, a lot of times what I realize, and I still hear, and it bothers me, is parents always tell their children, especially little girls, you better be on their pedestal. You need to be on this pedestal. Please stop telling your, your little girls that. Don't even tell your boys that, because what happens is that's a breeding ground to open the door for toxicity. Why? Because what you are telling your young boys and girls and even telling yourself if you think you need to be on somebody else's pedestal is that you're not worthy. And the reason why you're not worthy is because if you put somebody else on that pedestal, you're telling that person that they cannot measure up to the expectation of you. See, I don't have any expectations. I'm in an eight-year relationship now. I have no expectations. I don't expect people to say, when are you going to get married? If it's not broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I'm living off my own expectation. I don't expect him to propose at a specific time because it's been so long. I don't expect him to be perfect. I don't expect him to always be honest. I'm human. I'm not going to always be honest. Little white lies count as dishonesty, just so you know. When we go out and we hide the stuff that we buy, it's still a little white lie. So that's imperfection. And then so I don't hold him accountable to be something that I cannot perfect. And because I sit on my own pedestal. So what happens is I've been on everybody else's pedestal and I tried to live my life measuring up to what everybody expected from my parents. And I have great parents and they spoil me, but I still felt like I need to achieve for them. Not for me, for them. My friendships, they always think, oh, she got, she's the best. She, she, she can do this, she can do that, she can do that. They have that expectation because they see me go, but they don't see me break. See, that's the one thing. And it's everyday practice that I have to keep myself on that pedestal. So when you walk out of here and you think about who's on your pedestal, flip it. Go sit up there and then take a look down and, and see how perfect you have been. And look at the expectations that you are holding on everybody else in your life. Because accountability matters. And the only way you can be transparent and authentic and unapologetic is if you live in your own mess. Stay out of somebody else's backyard. Keep cleaning yours up every single day. Grow flowers, plant grass, you know, play, paint your fence. Put a fence up, build a deck, hang out lights. Always find something to do in your backyard. So basically, they always tell people when people get offended, mind your business. Or better yet, mind your business. Because a lot of people are so busy trying to live someone else's life that they forget to live their own. See, I live off of experience. I've gotten the opportunity to travel the world and try different foods and just do these all these things. I network. I network down. I network up. I network across. And every time I'm speaking, I tell, I hear people, you know, of course, getting ready to be New Year. You hear that? New Year, new me, same friends. <laughs> How are you going to have a new year? It's going to be a new you, and you have the same friends. Or that no new friends, why not? Because a lot of times what we look like is when our life is not manifesting what we want, it's because we are around the exact same thing all the time. And then some of us don't even know that we're the toxic friend. <laughs> broke people can't fix broke people. And you continually give out the same energy. So like me, I turn my phone off automatically after 10 o'clock. Nico, you know that. You can't reach me after 10. I don't even have it where you call back twice. You can get in touch with me. No. Nope. And now they have, oh, if you haven't got, if you have an a iPhone 15, or what, you got the iPhone 15 update? Oh, I love that. They got the focus now. So I can just shut it off, shut it off, shut it off. Yeah. So nobody don't have to bother me. I'm very respectful and intentional about my time because my time is my money, whether personal or not. And my my wealth is my health. So I'm intentional about what I give out to this world. I'm intentional about what it is that I bring in. I, I've learned how to intentionally date myself. Do you know what that means? How many of you date yourself? 
What does your date night, date nights look like? See, my date nights are not the traditional. Because even my man be like, where are you going? Oh, it's date night for myself. I'm out. I feel like if I can dress up for my man, I can dress up for me. If I can dress up for my friends, I can dress up for me. If he can wine and dine me, damn it, I can wine and dine myself. So that's exactly what I do. I go out to the finest restaurants, go mind my business, go sit by myself, get a reservation for one. And I realized when I started talking is that there are a lot of women who cannot even go to the movies by themselves. Mm -hmm. You can't? Oh no, I said, oh, they crazy. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so if you if you live in the area, you know they have what the iPick? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. That's my date night by myself. Because you can just ring the little button and bring your drinks. Yes. And bring you your food. You got your blankets, you got your pillow. I always have two blankets. Oh, I'm ready. I, I wind the seat back and I'm undisturbed. Turn my phone off don't, and I'm not disturbed. I take myself out and I cut my phone off because that's my time. And I'm intentional about it. I'm extremely busy. I know I wear a lot of hats and then I have friends and I have a very active social life and people <laughs> always say, oh, you're so busy. Nope, I'm booked and balanced. There's a difference. Mm, wow. I have gone beyond being booked and busy because y'all can have that. I did that for like 14 years working for the federal government. And when I left last year, I was like, ooh, this is nice. <laughs> this is real nice. I can go on vacation and not have to check in with anybody. What? Oh, what? I do it on my own if I choose to. So now I have a balance. I'm, I'm cautious about my weekends. I had a phone call today. I'm thinking, why is she calling me? I don't work weekends. I refuse because you have to be intentional about your time. I'm really great with time management. My time on my phone even tell me when I need to work out. Oh yeah, I don't listen to it. <laughs> but I try. It's an, it's, it's an intentional thing for me, and I'll get there one day. I feel like it's, if my phone keep going off and bugging me and bugging me, eventually I'll wake up to it, because that's my goal, to get back. Probably once the spring comes, because now it, the coldness is going to be my excuse. But family genetics, <laughs> it really it helps out, it does. So I'm just telling you and I'm sharing you about healing. See, I'm healed, I'm fun, I can be myself. I don't have to pretend to be somebody that I'm not and it feels good, it feels healthy. That's why I can have balance. Money is not everything. The, the richest people can be the most miserable and the brokest can be, have the most, the best life ever. And if you think I'm lying, go anywhere in a poverty area and watch kids. Because the kids are truthful. They can play in any circumstance. It's not until we grow up and then we, we are tarnished by what's going on into the world and what who has what and what success looks like that we start changing. Stay a, stay with a child's mind and always look at things as full, not half full. See, I don't live with that concept where people say, oh, you always look at the glass half empty or half full. Mm -mm, mine is full. If you are living, breathing, got a roof over your head, you know, can eat, if your glass is not full, I'm gonna knock it over. Because you are, you do not appreciate life. Again, your health is your wealth. And that's why, you know, you can just live unapologetically in this space. How many of you honestly feel like, you know, you love everything about yourself? Really? Yeah. Because I was going to say, you must not be human. We always find something that we don't like, but that's not so bad because you need work. It's called growth. And in order to live in a transparent space, you always have to be honest with who? Yourself. Yourself or the world? Yourself. Because I know a lot of people who are hung up on how the world sees them. I don't care how the world sees me. Broken, toxic, whatever. Because we, we are supposed to be strong. And every woman in here, if you know like I know, I'd rather not be okay every day because I won't know how to appreciate and know how to be efficient, effective, and everything else. 
So we're good, right? Everybody's going to work on something. You're going to grow. Okay. My name is Dr. Pam. I live an unapologetic life. I am booked and what? Balanced. So you are going to be booked and what? Balanced. Okay. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you.